Hi everybody, my name is Linda Bond and I'm here on Bitten by Books today with a vlog, first time I've ever done this actually, from my book Cuba Undercover which went on sale July 14th. So Rachel sent me some questions and I'm going to answer those for you all and the first one is describe yourself with five adjectives. Well, I'm a romance writer so I guess the first one will be passionate. Uh, probably intense. I think most of the people that know me would say that I'm kind of intense. Um, loyal. I like to think that loyal is one of them. Dedicated and fun, right? Most of us romance writers are a lot of fun too. So the second question is what real life science, pseudoscience, history, religion, or mythologies did you research for your book? That's kind of an interesting question. Um, really I researched the history because my book is set in Cuba now it's set in current current day Cuba, but the whole idea for this book came when I was on assignment as a TV news reporter in Cuba back when Pope John Paul II went to visit for the first time and meet with Fidel Castro. And there were some families that were coming back uh, from Tampa to Cuba and they were coming back for the first time in really 30 years. So a lot of them were visiting family that they hadn't seen in forever. And what fascinated me was I met um, a family called the Figurettos, and they had Josefina and Juan had five sons and only two of those sons would go back to Cuba while Fidel Castro was still alive because they blamed this dictator for dividing the family and making them come to America with quite literally nothing but the clothes on their back and starting over. So what interested me about that whole dynamic was that a dictator was able to divide a family decades after the revolution ended and I thought that whole history was really fascinating and I wanted to write a book about it I was further interested when I fell in love with one of the brothers after I was on assignment no conflict of interest there so that's a uh, kind of how the history played uh, into into my book oh uh, would your main character win on the show survivor by strength cheating or not at all well neither one of my main characters would cheat I can tell you that. So they would probably win by strength, at least Antonio Vega, or by intelligence and perseverance. Both of my characters are very kind of type A. Um, Antonio Vega is an alpha male, so he is very strong. But both of them really kind of rely on their intelligence to survive. Survival would be the kind of show that both of them, I think, would, would love to try to win. Have you ever gone out in public with your shirt on backwards? or your slippers on and when realizing just said screw it <laughs> well, no I've never done that but um, as a TV news reporter I can tell you a couple of embarrassing things I've done um, I guess maybe the first one that sticks in my mind the most because it was the first time I did something kind of silly like this <laughs> they teach you in J school when you have a microphone on always assume it's hot so I had a microphone on and I was standing in front of the camera like I'm in front of a camera now and um, I had to go to the bathroom and my live shot wasn't supposed to hit to like 610 or something like that. Um, so I'm talking to my photographer and I say, oh my gosh, I've got to pee. <laughs> and I had no idea that the director had accidentally popped me up. And everybody in my viewing audience heard that I had to pee. And not funny at the moment, but, uh, you know, I'm a person who <laughs> can laugh at herself. So it was kind of funny when I would go out to do stories for like the next few weeks and people would all ask me if I was able to go to the bathroom. But let me tell you, I learned a big lesson about that. You never say anything when your mic is on because you always assume that it's hot. Uh, let's see, what's the next question? Please tell us more about Cube Undercover and the story that drives it. And don't use the book synopsis, please. Well, I kind of told you a little bit about that already, uh, that it was driven by this fascination I had with a family dynamic of five brothers who loved each other and loved their parents, but only two of them would go back to parents with, go back to Cuba rather, with their parents while Fidel Castro was still alive. And their reasoning was they wanted to see Cuba through the eyes of their parents. And they knew when their parents passed away that they would never see Cuba the same way again. Well, the other brothers were making a political statement. They said, as long as Fidel Castro was in charge, we're not supporting anything he does. So years later, uh, this dictatorship was still dividing the family. So I kind of used that whole um, political and familial uh, division 
to be the foundation for this story. And my hero, Antonio Vega, watched his father be murdered in, in his front yard over political dissension. And then he was shipped off to America to survive because his family was worried if he stayed in Cuba, he'd be killed too. So he spent really his whole adult life uh, planning and plotting to revenge his father's death and also to get the rest of his family out of Cuba, which regardless of all the changes going on, still not an easy thing to do for a lot of different reasons. A lot of people on that island are still isolated by poverty alone, and that makes it impossible. So my heroine is Rebecca Menendez, and she's a Cuban-American reporter who uh, left Cuba when she was a baby and was always told that uh, her mother left without her father because her father was killed, and her father was killed as a reporter speaking out against the government. So that um, idol idolization she had of her father was like the very foundation for her career to become a reporter. So how these two meet is Antonio Vega decides that he's going to go back to Cuba and rescue his family, but he needs someone to document that rescue because video doesn't lie. People can say whatever they want, but video doesn't lie. So he wants it documented by a reporter. And Rebecca Menendez is the perfect reporter because she's Cuban-American, she looks Cuban, she speaks the language, um, and she's shown through her reporting that she's an advocate for victims of domestic violence, and his sister is a victim of domestic violence. So he tries to reach out to her through email and phone calls and such, and she won't respond because she does not ever want to go back to Cuba because the government killed her father, as far as she knows. So Antonio kidnaps her and offers her kind of an unusual trade that he knows her father's still alive because her father killed his father, and he wants revenge. He doesn't tell her that, but he does tell her that he has proof and information on her father still being alive and living in Havana. And if she comes to Cuba with him and documents the rescue of his family, he will take her to her father. And that's the very basis for this um, kind of roller coaster ride through Cuba. All right, let's see. Is Cuba Undercover part of a series? And how many more books will there be? Well, yes and no. All of the books that I write can stand alone. But because I'm a reporter, I base them all out of a Central Florida newsroom. And all of these stories are one reporter going out on assignment, stumbling onto a mystery or into some kind of conflict and falling in love as they try to resolve that mystery or the conflict. So it's a series in that all of the different characters work in the same newsroom and they appear in each other's stories. So if you read Alive at Five, which is my first book, you will meet Sam and Zach again in Cuba undercover. They do make a couple of appearances there. So I guess it is a series. Let's see, what sets Cuba Undercover apart from other books in the same genre? Well, I would say that uh, it's based on a true story. It's based on a love story. And I am a reporter in real life, and I have reported in Cuba. So some of the details that you get are from firsthand experience, and I think that kind of sets it apart. What type of characters can readers expect in your world? Well, I love alpha males. I'll just admit that. I like really strong, intelligent guys. And I don't mean the kind that, you know, necessarily lift weights in a gym. I just mean a very confident man who knows uh, what his goals and passions are in life and isn't afraid to go after them. That to me is an alpha male. And he may be six foot seven and built like a weightlifter, or he may not. He may be, maybe his strength is, you know, his intelligence. Uh, whatever it is, he's a strong guy and isn't afraid, could be challenged, but isn't afraid of a strong woman because all of my female characters are strong too and sassy and not afraid to speak their mind. Kind of like most reporters I know. Uh, let's see. What does your protagonist think about you? Would he or she want to hang out with you? Well, I think my protagonist would fall in love with me because he actually did. <laughs> I think, you know, Antonio Vega was based on my husband and our real life love story and Actually, my husband is the voice of Antonio because while I was, he was painting our condo, I, I was having trouble with some of the dialogue because I'm not an alpha male. And so I asked him if he would help me with some of it, and I literally followed him from room to room to room while he painted and read the entire manuscript to him. And he really changed a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the body language and a lot of the things that Antonio Vega did. So he is quite literally the voice of my hero. What are, uh, let's see, what's the weirdest thing you've Googled? Oh, that's good. <laughs> I hope the FBI never 
grabs my computer. Uh, let's see, the weirdest thing recently I've Googled, because I mean, as a reporter, I Google weird things all the time too, but as a fiction author, I think it would have to be, how do you kill someone in the hospital and make it look like an accident? That might raise a red flag or two. But my next book is called Live Shot, and it's, uh, I was a medical reporter for 15 years, so I really love the hospital setting and doctors and nurses and PAs and um, that whole adrenaline rush in the ER and saving lives. And so uh, that's right up my alley. <laughs> so I'm going to write, my next book is going to be based in an emergency room, and it's called Live Shot. Is it a killer shot or a killer calling the shots? So I had to look up how to kill people in a hospital and get away with it. So that's the weirdest thing I've ever Googled. Um, what's coming up for you for the rest of 2015? Well, I'm working on Live Shot. I'm halfway through a book called Eyewitness. And I always like to write books that have something to do with Tampa because that's where I live. And um, so Cuba Undercover obviously deals with the Hispanic Cuban population in Tampa. Alive at Five was uh, based... Um, on an adventure vacation and there's really cool things you can do in Florida all year round like skydive and swim with the sharks and underground cave diving so that's what Alive at Five is about or at least that's the setting so the setting of Live Shot will be an emergency room in a bustling city and uh, Eyewitness is about the mob and if you've uh, ever read anything about Tampa and the mob you know we have a pretty interesting history so uh, that is the next book that I'm working on. And I'm also working on a book called Scavenger Hunt, Enter These Woods, The Hunter, and Leave the Hunted. Uh, with my 11-year-old daughter, Jillian, she wants to write a book, and I think she can do it. So she wrote the prologue, and it's pretty creepy. So we are working on, I guess it would be a middle, middle school grade, high school grade book um, that would be suspense and really play on all of our fears about going which most of us have some. So that's what's coming up for 2015. I really appreciate you all uh, welcoming me to uh, this vlog. And if you have any questions about any of my books, you can find me at uh, www.lindabond.com. Thanks so much.